Hey folks, Jimmy here, aka Pallet of the Dead. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the latest issue of Warhammer Age of Sigmar Stormbringer magazine. Now, as per usual with all these videos, if you like them, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and of course, drop me a comment down below. I love hearing back from you guys, it goes a massive way to helping out the channel too. Now, obviously, this week it is the penultimate edition of this magazine. So, issue 79. We get our first part to uh, good old Swamp Boss Scumdrek and his huge sludge rake beast, and it's a pretty cool mini. Now, obviously, we only get part of it, so there are parts to come. So, next week, we get the base and the other parts of the sprue, which will then make the entire kit. So, you want to keep this safe because you can't build too much of it at the moment. So, you can choose the paint, you might be able to choose a head for the sludge rake beast. Um, maybe a couple of other little bits and pieces, but that's about it. So, keep it safe, you know, and uh, be prepared to use it next week when we get the rest of the mini. But otherwise, it's a really cool mini, a bit of a centerpiece style mini as well. So, it has a bit of its own elements of kind of being a very, very important piece. Obviously, if you want those cruel boys to have a very, very, very big centerpiece, you want Gobsprack, the big, massive the Oric on the big massive vulture thing, um, which is really, really cool. And yeah, definitely worth picking up if you're a Cruel Boys player. Now, moving on into uh, the last but one issue of Stormbringer Magazine, we get yet another finale section to a story that we're already in the process of. So we get the finale to the gathering. Now, I understand why they've done it, but I disagree with why they've done it. So, they have done, because last week we had a finale to a different story, the week before we had a finale to a different story, and it makes no sense to me. To me, if you're going to put stories in the magazine, have them consecutive issues. Or, if you're going to miss out an issue, have them every, kind of do them in a consecutive style. So, if you're going to do part one, do part two following it instead of doing part one of one story then part one of another story and then instead of then you'll get part two of one story and then you'll get part one of the third story it makes no sense it does not compute in my head of how it works because you want to be able to read the story from start to finish instead of having to go through the entire collection of a magazine get them all together put all the pages in the right order and then go through each story it makes better sense if you're already in order because then you can kind of go oh yeah i remember the story da, 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 da. read it and away you go maybe that just might be me but yeah it makes more sense to me so yeah if you disagree with me you disagree with me but for me i like to be able to read one thing from one start to the end and not get kind of sidetracked and pushed into reading something else anyway though these pages obviously you get four pages again for a finale section uh i have some nice artwork so you've got some big squigs which is always really nice to see and good fun and uh bit of stormcast first and fighting off against the uh, gloom spike gits which is always fun moving on though we get more iron jaws information so we get information of how a war is born so at the head of each war is a strong leader the driving force behind the power and disarray of the army these mighty chiefs blend the roles of figurehead, tactical commander, totem and enforcer. Troops are drawn to these larger than life personalities and join the army to become part of their legend and to take part in their notoriously bloody campaigns. Many of the troops under their command will only ever see them from a distance. Such is the size and scope of a bar. So, kind of as opposed to how like um, the Empire or Bretonia work in good old Warhammer of the Old World, a war works very, very different. So instead of different banners coming together through allegiances and negotiation and such like that, an allegiance, the a war can kind of hoover up other tribes because they all go into that kill frenzy and they want to be part of the chaos and the destruction and the madness that is a war so it works in a very very different style so if you have a strong enough leader that leader can just take his tribe and start bringing in other tribes that will join up 
along the way without having to negotiate anything, just going, yeah, you're in the back, get back there. Maybe occasionally might having to knock some heads together, but that's about it really. But otherwise, the war is very, very well comprised, just like an army can be. So, wars can have multiple heroes, infantry, beasts, ranged troops, and gargans within them. All of them work as a deadly fighting force, with a little bit of disarray and just absolute mind-numbing chaoticness behind them, but it works nonetheless, which is exactly how a regular army would work if they're marching in and battle lines and such like. So, very, very simple to kind of work out in a way. But yeah, really, really good stuff. Moving on though, we get a page for our Cruel Boys. So we get the Swamp Boss Scumdrek page. Swamp Boss Scumdrek is a living legend among Oryx. He is famed for his collection of strange beasts, his prolific gambling, and his prowess as a leader and fighter. So, Swamp Boss Scumdrek does come into battle on different beasts. The main beast, obviously, that we get as part of this mini is Slot Claw. So Slot Claw is the prize sludge rake beast in Swamp Boss Scumdrek's huge Merkvast Menagerie, a drained mangrove swamp in which Scumdrek keeps his huge collection of unpleasant creatures. So obviously the Cruel Boys utilize a lot of big creatures and very unusual creatures and very kind of disgusting and grim creatures and such like that. And um, Swamp Boss Scumdrek is no different to that. So yeah, makes a bit of sense, but yeah, pretty cool stuff. On the other page, you get to do your usual, so you get to give them a reason for joining, chosen tactics, and such like. Up to you how you want to go about doing it. Now, there is a slight alternative build to Swamp Boss Scumdrek, so you can have it as not Swamp Boss, Scum, Swamp Boss Scumdrek if you want it to, um, because there are some slight, ever, ever so slight variations to the build if you want there to be. If you don't want it to be and you want to go for the generic Swamp Boss Scumdrek, by all means, go for it. I cannot blame you. Going into the build, though, obviously, there are parts we haven't got yet. So keep these pages at hand, ready for next week when we get the other parts, do the mini, and there's quite a bit to it. So obviously, you've got your sub-build of Swamp Boss Scum Drake himself, which you're going to want to do separate because then you can get into all the nooks and crannies and get all the detailing. Then... You have actual, the actual start to Swamp Bus Scumdre to the Sludge Raker Beast himself. Now, there is quite a bit to it, so take your time when building it and dry fit every piece just in case you need to try and fill any gaps. Which obviously, you can use green stuff if you want to use green stuff, you can use modeling putty, you can try and fill the gap with a bit of glue uh, and stuff like that if you wanted to, or if you're you know, super fancy and you're into it and you can might create some grey goo, which is obviously your melted down sprues in glue in super glue. Um most people use like the Tamiya bottles of super glue. So it's like that. You'll find videos of how to do it anyway. Um but yeah, you can do that as well if you want. When it dries out, it forms a very smooth surface. So, you know, it's up to you how you want to go out doing it. But yeah. Otherwise, very, very straightforward, very, very easy. Um, and when you build, you're going to have the whole creature built in one go. My thing with it is, <clears throat> I would spray paint him. So, I probably wouldn't mount him fully on the base in one go. Spray paint is your friend. Whether you're using, say, Colour Forge is or standard grey or you want to use one of the greens or even black or anything like that you can do it will make life so much easier for prepping this mini and getting ready for painting and getting that undercoat on if you choose to do it the other way and do it by brush i'm not going to lie to you i will not envy you the way you're doing it the way you're doing it is you know perfectly valid but it will be more time consuming, consume a lot more paint, and has the potential to go streaky, which is why I will prefer to do the spray paint, personally. So, your choice though. If you are gonna spray paint though, as I've said, I think it was last week, um, make sure you do it in a well-ventilated area, so outside if possible. 
uh, your temperature ideally needs to be around about the 20 degree mark. Anything over 23, 24 degrees is a bit too hot and your paint's gonna dry a bit faster than you want it to. So it might dry before it actually touches the model, which then leaves you with a powdery texture. If you do it too cold, it'll be too wet and it'll go streaky and yeah, rubbish and away you go. So pick your timing and pick your weather very, very carefully. Obviously, if you live in a colder area or if you can't find the right time to do it and you've got a garage, spray it in a garage. Just make sure the garage is fair, relatively warm. But anyway, fairly straightforward. Um, but yeah, I would spray paint it. I wouldn't even fully mount it on the base. Personally, if you're going to spray paint it from the side and downwards and everything like that, and from the front, blue tack it onto the base. So then you've got something to hold it. Um, but make sure you turn it over to spray paint the underside of it as well. So you'll just make life easier in the long run, in my opinion anyway. Some people will probably disagree with me because, yeah, it is what it is. Um, but yeah, when you built it, it's going to look something like that. So obviously there's loads of little details in there. So if you are going to spray paint it, make sure you're doing it, painting it by brush under very, very good light. And you're going to want to pick your colours wisely. So obviously it's a swamp beast. So you're going to want some swampy, earthy colours. So browns and greens and such like that uh, will make it look really, really good. Or even dark hues of blue uh, can make it look fantastic. So like ink by darkness and such like that. Yeah. Anyway, enough talk about paint and uh, how to paint it. Because I've not fully decided how exactly I want to paint these. Uh, you've got your order tactics for the Storm Drake Guard. Obviously... They are very manoeuvrable, high damage, and they are prior, but they are priority targets. They have some really cool abilities, and yeah, they're just pretty ace, aren't they? I do like them to the point where I have two lots of them there. But yeah, really cool stuff. Then we move on to our battle plan. So our last but one battle plan is Sally Forth. You're using three heroes, six troops from either side. So you have a larger destruction territory and three smaller order territories and then your four objectives. Obviously, capture your objectives and smash the hell out of each other. Have fun with it. Enjoy yourself. That is a whole main thing with this game, in all honesty. Enjoy yourself and enjoy playing it and have a bit of fun. But yeah, really, really good stuff. And uh, yeah, more of an interesting battle. So good fun. Hopefully next week they'll go even bigger, but we'll wait and see. Moving on though, obviously next week, issue 80, the very, very last issue, Swamp Boss Scum Drake Part 2. So we get our base, we'll get the other sprue and we can get going with it, build it up and get going. And then that's it. We get our final battle, we get some more order tactics, we'll get maybe one or two other little pieces in there. I don't imagine it's going to be massive, but really, really good. Now, I'm not going to lie, if I don't feel, remember to say it next week, um, I think this magazine has been really good fun. I've really, really enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the, I have enjoyed the stories in it, although they've been out of order because, yeah, it makes me irritated. Um, the minis have been fantastic. Now, whatever the future holds for this magazine, who knows? But obviously we do also have next week Combat Patrol magazine. Now, I will be doing Combat Patrol magazine as well. So we go back into the 41st millennium. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do painting wise for it. Um, we will discuss it at some point, I'm sure. But... I'm kind of looking forward to it. I'm kind of looking forward to going back to the 41st millennium in terms of the magazine. It's really good fun. It's quite enjoyable. And we'll see where it goes. But otherwise, that is it for this video. There is another video coming shortly, uh, quite possibly tomorrow, um, where it's something a little bit different. It's back to a painting video, finally. But anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you sometime soon. Bye-bye now.